the Trust is Valley's Kids. It started in 1977, mainly to provide youth activities for young people in Penegraig. And over the years, we've built up buildings, assets, places that we, that we need to do things with the community, with young people, with, with, with families. And so at this point in time, we own this building, which is SOA Centre in, in Penegraig, which is probably the, well, the largest building we own and, and the building we've, we've worked in for the longest period of time. Um, we also have um, some smaller shop properties in Trehubert in, and in Penegraig, which again were purchased for specific purposes because we needed a base to work in those communities. So it's always come from there's a, there's a, there's a need, people want, want services, want activities, and we need somewhere to put those on. Um, the last the, the, we also have a, um, a cottage in the Gower, and again, that's to provide residential experiences for young people and for families and for, for, for younger kids as well, away from their environment, away from their community in, in, a, in a beautiful setting in the, in the Gower. As well as the, 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 the buildings we own, we also use a number of other, 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 other buildings, and they've been developed in many respects in partnership, in partnership with the local authority or in partnership with the housing association or in partnership with, with, with other people who work in those areas. So for instance, our building in, in Penaranglin in Treherbert is, is actually owned by us, it's owned by the local authority. Though when, when, it was, uh, when, they, when they leased it to us or gave it to us effectively, um, it was for derelict council houses. We developed it, we raised the money to, to transform it into, into, a, into a community centre um, we now are responsible for running it um, at, a, at a peppercorn rent. So it wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for us, but it isn't our, our actual physical, physical asset. But in terms of the estate, it's a crucial asset as, because it, it leads or contributes to the transformation of an area. Okay. Well, the first thing to say is we, we never set out to acquire assets. We set out to work in communities. We set out to work with people, with families, with with kids, yes, that's where, that's where we started out from. But inevitably you say, well, where are we going to do the activities? Where, where can we do this? So we were looking for, a, we were, the, the space we were in in Penagraig was too small. We were overwhelmed with, with the number of people who were coming and we looked round Penagraig for other buildings. And uh, so Kapel Soa, as it then was, was not being, it was only part of the building was being used by the congregation. And so they actually offered us the main building, this, this large, beautiful space. It, wasn't, it was a large space when they offered it to us, but it wasn't a beautiful space. It was riddled with dry rot. It had holes in the roof. And so in effect, it was much more of a liability than it was an asset. But, but there were two things that decided us to take it on. A, we needed the space. But B, buildings like this are an important part of the community. And if we hadn't taken it on, the danger was that it would have either been turned into a garage or flats or would have been knocked down and that would have been a terrible shame for Valley's community, it would have been a terrible shame for Penegraig. So we, we took it on, it took us seven years to do the initial work. We did the initial work for £35,000 I remember and lots and lots of voluntary labour and, 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 and schemes as it was at the, was at the time. And, and I suppose where, how it is where it is now, in, in 2000 we were looking at um, the Disability Act and looking at putting a lift in and that spiralled to the state that we spent over three million pound on refurbishing it to have the state-of-the-art building we have now. But again all that development was based on the needs of people. People wanting a space that was theirs, a space that was quality, was offered the best that was available in, 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 in the, I believe in most in every community in, in, in the valleys. The other, I suppose the other major asset we have is, is, the, is the factory in Porth. And again, that grew out of A, the danger of losing the building to the community, but B, the need to have somewhere that our young people who are, who, who are heavily into the arts, heavily into creative industries, they see that as vitally important to them. Want, they wanted to retain it, they wanted somewhere where they could develop their work, where they could, where they could listen, where they could be live music, where they could be video, where they could, where they could be radio, where they could be things that they were interested in, and so we set about raising the money to buy that building. Some of it came from trusts, some of it came from um, the Coalfields Regeneration Trust, 
but we, we didn't raise the money to, to buy it all, so we ended up having to take a loan out from the WCVA Community Investment Fund to fund some of that, uh, to buy some of that building. I think we were naive when we set out. We set out on, on, on we said yes to the, to the gift of this building with galloping dry rot and holes in the roofs and no real background in, in, in doing anything with buildings. So it was very much learning on the job. And there's, there is an awful lot. To, I know an expert on dry rot. I can smell dry rot. If I walk into a building, I can smell dry rot. It's, it's, it is that. Uh, but it's, it's um, I mean, it starts off with, with the problem of the building. Then, then you, you, are, you have to find the money to actually do the work. And depending on, on, on your ambition in doing that work, it can start off as we did at a basic level of doing repairs. When we started off with buildings, we did some of the repairs with, with some of the young people, with past members who were volunteers. In fact, our first, when we put the f a first floor in this building, the steel was fabricated and erected by a volunteer, which is quite, quite remarkable. I don't know whether we'd be able to do it at the time, but he was an unemployed steel worker, so he spent his time fabricating and erecting the steel that was donated by British Steel. So there's, those, those, those are the problems. There's then the problem of actual understanding the process of redeveloping a building, which we went into again, even though we'd, 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 we'd done it at a basic level, at an amateur level, if you like, when we went into the professional arena where we were getting grants from the Arts Council or getting grants, European grants, and we were having an architect and a quantity surveyor and all, 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 the, all, all these people that you needed. There was a, it was a, a steep learning curve in, in going through all the processes you needed to go through to, to develop a building. Um, what other ones? I mean, the obvious one is getting the money. Yeah, you, 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 you start off, there's a, there's, a, there's a cost for doing the building. You, 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 you have a period of time where you have to raise the money, which is all, 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 always takes longer than you think it's going to take. Then you start doing the work. You've got it, you've, you've got all the money, it's all there. You start off doing it. And then I think probably inevitably you hit snags. In our case, we hit £100,000 worth of snags in the first six months of doing the building, which then, of course, you then have to go out and, 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 and raise that money. So it's a constant, it's a constant battle to, to get the money, to, to find... And I suppose that's another, another crucial part of doing, developing assets, is finding high-quality, sympathetic professionals, sympathetic arch architects, who actually listen to what you want rather than provide you with something that's either off the shelf or this, this, that, they, that they would like to do. So, and we were very lucky in, in John Card, our architecture was exceptional, yes? He, he listened to us, he talked to us constantly, and he gave us designs that were, were, out, were outstanding and, and have stood the test, test, test of time in terms of, of being, you know, seven days a week, 200 kids kids a day um, using it. You know what they say about, you know, about buildings or about sculpture? If you, if you want to see whether it works, give it to kids to play with. And that's what we do with buildings, and it, it certainly worked for us. Well, I, I, suppose, I suppose the first thing to say about enterprise is the main enterprise that we're involved in is, is the work we do with communities, with young people, with families. That's our enterprise. The, the assets, the buildings, are a means to that end. They, they, we, we couldn't, you couldn't do the, the play work, you couldn't do the youth work, you couldn't do the, the computer training, you couldn't do the artistic work if you didn't have a space to do it in. And I passionately believe those spaces have to be based in communities in need. They have to be, if you're trying to, to transform communities, which is part of our remit, then you have to do it in those communities. You can't do it in Cardiff, you can't even do it in pont de if, you if you're working in Pennegrag. You have to have assets, you have to have places that they can come to in their communities. <coughs> so how do, we, how do we use our assets? How do we, how do we make money from them? I suppose the, 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 the basic answer is, for most of our work, we don't. For this place to function, it has to be funded from taxes. That's the reality in the same ways the primary school is, is, is funded from taxes, in the same ways the university are funded by taxes, or the, in the same way the higher ed further education is funded by taxes. If you are going to do, if you're going to change people's lives, if you're going to support people, then you have to have grants. You have to have, people have to be prepared to say, yes, we'll give you money to do that. Um, but that's, that's the mainstay of our of our activities. I suppose there's a, there's a slight 
there's a difference with, our, with, the, with the development of the factory in Port, in that we set off from the outset to say we would generate income that would support it and sustain it at a basic level into the future because we live in very, un very uncertain times. So with the, with the factory we've set out to say we will endeavour over three years to, to make it sustainable at a basic level. But even there, if we go to, and we started doing university courses in, in, in the creative industries, we're looking at setting up a, a, an, inter, a, an internet radio station. To do those things, it will need support in the form of grants, support in the form of, of whatever it is, but it will need public support to be able to do those extra things. So although even some of what we could do at a basic level might be sustainable through rental, through, through running events, the core educational works that the organisation does will need that public support for it to continue. I, right, first thing is, it'll take longer than you think it's going to take. I think the average time for, for building, the, our architect told us, the average time for redeveloping a building is something like five to seven years or something like that. Even if you think you've got the money, it always takes longer than you're going to take. So that's okay, as long as you're going to, you're going to accept that from the beginning. The crucial thing is to do it, is to take that first step, is to have that, if you have a vision, if you have a view of what you want to do, and people in your community want that thing to happen, then is to say, yes, we want, we want it to happen, we're going to start, is, is, so that first step is, is, is the crucial step. And then be prepared for lots and lots of setbacks, but keep your eye on the, on the goal, on where you're going to. And, and I think it is keeping, putting one foot in front of the other, and having an excitement and a, an idea of where you where you go, where you're going, and keeping that in in front of you. Um, the other thing is, I, and I think this is an important thing, is that don't be caught up in the building. Don't be caught up in the beautiful space because spaces are nothing un unless people are using them. We, you know, people come in here and they say, "Oh, this is a this is a beautiful space. This is a beautiful hall." But it's used as an indoor adventure play area on four days of the week, with kids swinging on ropes and bouncing on inflatable play structures. And then on, on, on Friday, we clear it all away, and it'll become a theatre venue, or it'll become a concert hall, or it'll become a dance space. So built assets are important, but they're, then they're insignificant compared to the things that go on in, inside them. And that's the crucial thing about developing assets, is what you're going to do with them is enthusing people that, about the activities that are going to take place in them when they're finished.